ของเราครับอืมโอเค We're just gonna go straight to Q&A's again, yeah. one question at a time. Let's start with WGNO. We'll just work our way over to the right. Um, so Mary, you've been Good spending afternoon. tens of thousands of dollars on overseas trips. Uh, do you feel that was the right decision given the state of the city right now? Tens of thousands of dollars is inaccurate. Um, my job as the mayor of the city of New Orleans, being the chief executive officer of this city. I have a responsibility of growing our economy and culture is absolutely a part of our economy and that has to grow, especially, especially as we're rebounding from COVID-19. Um, when you, and, and, and it seems like there's a focus just on the sister cities, okay, but no focus on the impacts that those visits actually had, not only on our economy, but the men and women that are cultural bears. Um, I would advise you to speak to the cultural community directly and find out how it has impacted their quality of life, but also their bottom line. But in addition to that, I would say the focus needs to be on um, collectively uh, how we market our city. You know that uh, public dollars from um, hotel, motel from sales tax uh, goes to organizations or agencies, public organizations that have the responsibility as well as marketing the city of New Orleans. Uh, particularly when you look at the budgets and the expenses there, I would say you need to do that. Um, because when you do that and you look at the mayor and even the budget for travel that I have, you can see that it is pennies on a dollar relative to a $1.4 billion organization that I lead. And the ultimate ambassador of this city is the mayor of the city of New Orleans. So with that, I will continue to um, create partnerships. I will continue to uh, nurture and expand uh, our cultural footprint that drives the economy of this city and of the state of Louisiana. And I will continue even to work with partner organizations like New Orleans and Company, for example, that I spoke to uh, one of the directors actually just yesterday um, where I was informed that international travel is down. It has yet to rebound since COVID-19. Uh, there's a need for us to increase uh, international visitors to the city of New Orleans. And why? Because it is a part of the economy of the city and that of the state of Louisiana. So you can't pick and choose how you support culture, nor how you grow uh, our economy relative to culture. And so with that, especially hearing on yesterday, uh, even the numbers being down with international travel, I think my visibility and support of our cultural community internationally speaks to meeting that need firsthand. WWL in Indianapolis. Mayor, your appearance in juvenile court last week in support of a family of a carjacking uh, defendant who had been convicted in three carjackings. Mm -hmm. How did you uh, connect with that family, mm -hmm. number one, and do you regret doing that in such a public forum that mm -hmm. has drawn a firestorm of criticism in a continuing, growing controversy, not just locally, but now nationally? Sure, so a couple of things um, with that. First of all, you know, as mayor of the city of New Orleans, um, uh, juvenile, our juvenile correctional facility is under my authority, meaning the Juvenile Justice Intervention Center. I'm responsible for that. And so that means that, yes, I do have a direct, um, not only responsibility, but communication with juveniles that who that are assigned to the JJIC. Uh, every single week, um, I get the list. I want to know who's there. Bam. The child, the parent, where they live, contact information, how long, when were they admitted? Every week. And I do that because I reach out to everyone that touches the JJIC. And so from that level of outreach, there comes the relationship 
one, to ensure that that young person is steered and pivoted to a better pathway. Um, that also speaks to the outreach to that, pa to that family member, that guardian, that parent or guardian. And so you build those relationships simply because I make it, I'm intentional about meeting our young people and families where they are in order to um, ensure that there's a better quality of life for this community, for this city. And what a better way than going directly to those individuals that have um, touched um, the system. Um, the Pathways program uh, is one program that you've heard me tout and talk about often. Even on my most recent um, um, uh, crime summits, if we call it, or meetings that I held in the Lower Ninth Ward, um, as well as in District C, um, I talked about pathways. It's just one example of how the city is investing in young people that have touched the system. And so uh, Ja was one of those young people. Uh, and Ja, as you know, since you've been since doing the research, know that he was sentenced by the judge to or sentenced by the judge to participate in programs like Pathways. And as a result of that, meaning that young person doing exactly what the judge said that he needed to do, I felt that it was very important for me to, to support that positive behavior so that that young person stayed on the path of making better choices. Um, so it was there to support the young person. I'm sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm not supposed to because it's a young person. Um, but um, that was my way of supporting this young person that was um, required uh, to participate in a program that the city of New Orleans had created uh, and is funding. Uh, and yeah, so. If I can follow up, do you regret the decision? You have crying, distraught victims on the other side of court, and you're siding with the perpetrator and his family. You could have certainly met with them privately in a way that didn't blow up into this controversy. Furthermore, others, including the police officers you preside over, are very unhappy that they work hard to make solid arrests and build a case that was successful in getting adjudication. Uh, what do you say to those officers, to those victims that you cited in this case publicly in an open forum, open court, adversarial hearing with the perpetrator and his family? So first of all, I pick no sides. Me showing up to support a young person that did what he was required to do, meaning by the judge, that's not picking a side. That's supporting a young person that has made decisions that puts him on a better pathway. That's what I did. I also um, heard directly even from those victims there and showed a lot of love to them. But as I mentioned, this is not about picking a side. You know, the sea of violence has many rivers, many. And violence hurts everybody in our community. That's what we saw. We saw that it impacts absolutely our victims who matter. Trauma is real. And that's exactly why the city of New Orleans, under my leadership, invests heavily in trauma-informed care. Standing up our trauma center, like at SUNO, for example, because victims matter and they need support and they need resources as well. But as it relates to juveniles in the city of New Orleans, I am over a juvenile correctional facility and I get that information directly. As it relates to victims, as you know, that goes directly to the DA's office and in support in terms of programs by the city. So I don't get a direct list of, of victims and the like, but that's something that I'm absolutely open to in order to provide the level of support that all of our victims need because they matter. 
but also when we talk about investing in root causes of crime and violence in our community, we have to do that, and we are doing that. And so it requires support on all levels. So it's not picking a side. So I didn't pick a side. But the symbolism was that you sat with the victim and that's, the family. That's your... So you're saying you don't regret it because cops are furious and the victims say you haven't reached out to them and they're furious. And are you I don't, the city of New Orleans? Well, I don't have direct information of those victims, um, but absolutely was able to touch them and show them some level of not only concern, but a level of, of love and understanding that the trauma that they experienced is real. And that's, that's what happened on that day. Uh, but again, not picking a side. So no, I do not regret supporting a young person that has demonstrated that they are willing to make better decisions. And in doing so, that actually provides some level of support on the victim side. It's more proactive because if you can stir that individual from making poor choices in the future, then that means you're getting results on the ground. 88% of the young people that we service through Pathways stay on the right track, stay on the right path. And you can't tell me that that doesn't have a positive impact on the streets of New Orleans. I'm so glad that you all care about it now, but Pathways is a program that I've been talking about for a mighty long time that has results. And me participating or showing up in court isn't the first time that I've shown up in court, as a matter of fact. And when I think about it, and I think about this young person that I not only supported, but is doing very well now in living with this grandfather, I know for a fact we're doing the right thing and we are making the right investments. In regards to my officers that you're talking about, I disagree with that 100% as well because my officers did their job. And you know what? That first line is being arrested. They arrested. They did the job. The second line is for it to go to the DA's office and then go down the road through the criminal justice system. The judge, for example, did his job as well. So this is a, this is a success story, in my opinion, because we were able to not only arrest, but turn that kid around and put that kid on the right path. And I know for a fact that that's had a positive impact on our community. And I, it, it just baffles me how you don't see that. We have to, uh, excuse me, excuse me. We have to move a little quicker. The advocate, and then we'll keep moving on. One question, please. Uh, Mayor, the records uh, do, in fact, show that your trips, your recent trips, when including all of the people that went, mm -hmm. have cost in the tens of thousands of dollars. They have included um, at least one hotel night room stay in Paris that mm -hmm. cost uh, $700 in excess of that for one night, um, including your own first class travel on, mm -hmm. on, on flights. Why, were the, why was the first class travel and also that one uh, hotel room necessary? Why was that expense necessary? Well, it was necessary because of uh, the travel, meaning traveling in this environment. I do travel business class, absolutely. I need to be protected. I need to be safe as I do business on behalf of the city of New Orleans. And when you look at mine, I do encourage you to look at other public entities that market the city in order to grow tourism, but even me growing the economy relative to our culture. So it is my job. I will continue to do my job. And it was absolutely worth it simply because, and you're talking about France, you're talking about France from which we've come, meaning a part of the fabric of the city of New Orleans. You're talking about France that has an ambassador living in the city of New Orleans. You're talking about France that has supported a full-time position on resiliency for the city of New Orleans because we're on the front lines of climate change. You're talking about France that has residents and uh, artists in residence right here in the city of New Orleans, over four of them. You're talking about France that is embedded in the fabric of the history of this city and will continue to be. So me nurturing that relationship 
is a responsibility that I have as mayor of the city of New Orleans, and I will continue to grow and drive our economy in the right direction. Why the $700 night hotel room? The hotel rooms are booked by travel agents, and I can't tell you why. I would say because that, that's what was available. I mean, I think it's common sense in that regard. Next question. Mayor, you said when you were talking about the victims that you showed love in court. Well, mm -hmm. the victims told us that you tapped them on the shoulder and said, God bless, and then walked out during one of their victim, state, uh, uh, victim impact statements. How is that showing them love? And do you have any plan to reach out to them and talk to them about why you were there? Well, I told you why I was there. In regards to showing love, and the way that you described is not the way that it was encountered, meaning for me. Um, I definitely did not want to disrupt the proceedings of the courtroom, which were um, in action. Um, I had a schedule that I needed to attend to. Um, I did not want to leave and just walk out without not only showing care, meaning, because I, I stopped. I did say, God bless you. That means something to me. Maybe not to you, but it means something to me. And not only touching them on the shoulder, but I rubbed them. But that's my way. The best that I could do in that moment. But that was in that moment. So any interactions or any time to sit down with, I'm open to that, always am. But do not discount a God bless you, because for me, I'm very spiritual. I walk in faith, and I believe when I say, when I say God bless you, I'm actually reciting even a, a, a Hail Mary. You have no idea what's going on uh, in, in that connection. So. I appreciate um, your question, um, but yeah, I appreciate your question. Clark Faith. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, hey, Mayor. Um, so two, two questions. Um, the first, have you done this before? Have you gone into court to support uh, juvenile offenders before? I said yes. Okay. This is not my first time. Have you gone into support victims before? Um, actually, yes. Well, in court, no. I haven't been asked to, no. Um, if I was asked to, understanding the situation, I would, but I, I haven't had that interaction. Um, the judge said that you were- In regards to that, because actually, I have I done that before? I, as mayor? Yeah. Okay. So no. As mayor, I haven't been asked to. Okay. Uh, so the family asked you then? The family asked me um, to support this, this Yes, this young person, yes. And based on the knowledge that I have of the young person and the history, yes, I supported the young person. Just one follow-up. Uh, the judge said you were a character witness for him? Character, I don't understand that. That you appeared on his behalf in order to somehow impact the sentencing that the judge would hand down? I don't know where you got that from. So you were not a character witness? I don't know what you're talking about. Doesn't the issue? All right, so speaking in regards to overseas travel, what my colleague mentioned um, about the flight, you mentioned that spending tens of thousands of dollars was inaccurate, but as you know, we did receive the receipts on that trip. So can you tell me why did you book a first class flight to France for almost $18,000, and do you think that price is outrageous? So no, in terms of the cost to fly uh, relative uh, to that particular trip, that was the cost, and that's what we spent. Uh, business uh, class in terms of travel is what I do, um, particularly in this environment to ensure, you know, my, my safety. And so tens of thousands relative to me is accurate. Okay. Meaning that meaning when you said that I was inaccurate saying tens of million, tens of thousands, I'm saying that relative to me that is inaccurate. It's not tens of thousands. Absolutely. And just a follow up question, um, not only of the money, but when you think in terms of the state that the city is in, in terms mm -hmm. of violence, do you think now is the right time to take trips to, you know, increase the tourism here in New Orleans? We don't doubt that that is a good thing, but is now the right time? So there's always, uh, in regards to growing our economy, there's no wrong time to grow our economy, especially understanding that our cultural community 
were the hardest hit due to COVID-19, not only in deaths, but in their pockets in terms of their, their income. So no, I think it's the best time, particularly how we've made tremendous progress uh, coming out of COVID-19 um, to focus on growing the economy in this area. So, so no, I believe that it was the right thing to do, especially understanding that our cultural community was going elsewhere, meaning to multiple places, but they were going to grow the economy of the city of New Orleans. And even young people that were a part of that had the opportunity to be even in Switzerland for 10 days. So when we talk about even violent crime, as you said, that's being proactive. That's ensuring that you're, you're giving your young people an opportunity and exposure that they may have never had in their lifetime, but you're providing that level of opportunity and showing them that, hey, they really can, they have, they have better opportunities utilizing the gifts and the talents that they have, being culture bearers of this community. I have a have what did the DOJ say about the consent decree? We don't have time. What did the DOJ say questions. about the consent decree? We won't answer what that. did the DOJ no, say answer. about the consent decree? Why Thank you, you all. Answer? What did the What did the DOJ say about the consent decree? Thank what did the DOJ Thank say you. about the consent decree? The DOJ didn't say anything. What did the DOJ <laughs> say about the consent decree? The DOJ didn't say anything. So why were you there? Why did you go above the judge's head to try to go to the DOJ to talk about the consent decree? What was that all about? Thanks, everybody. Yes. What was that all about? Why you don't answer it? I thought the cops wanted it. If everybody wanted it, why you don't talk about it? Thank you so much. And you surely don't have to be so disrespectful. No, you don't have to be so freaking invasive every time somebody's trying to talk to you. Thank you all so much. Let me know if you all need anything else. Yeah, I need to know why she went to D.C. to talk to the DOJ about the consent decree. 